more button, you have your weather, it, uh, and you can range in and out. You know, we can pull this out even further depending on where you're going. You actually, have to, yeah. as you're flying, this is this is live. This is uh, downloaded XM XM yeah. weather. So does this come with any of the um, collision avoidance? Um, right side. Uh, if you have the next button, right, uh, you have uh, TCAS, okay, uh, which is terrain avoidance. This is your traffic, so you're going to see. Uh, oh, you can see everything. Six wrong. miles out. Uh, you can change the, the, the two As miles. Radar and everything. Yeah. Yep. There's a two mile ring, and you can actually. Uh, so you can pick up. Now that interrogates um, other transponders. And that's what you're seeing. Not, it's not uh, like you would see from. Uh, Radar, radar, you know, like uh, it doesn't have an actual built in radar where it's actually seeing the targets. Right. So the other aircraft have to be squawking for you to see it. Transponder has to be active. What's your favorite? It has um, synthetic vision, which which is yeah. basically you can have zero visibility and you're seeing. Yeah. What we also have is uh, let me get over the auxiliary page. Have you been up? Turn down. We have uh, also night vision. Cool. <laughs> You didn't know see that. See the deers running across the runway in front of you. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, or at night you can see another aircraft on the runway. Mm -hmm. And low visibility, it actually penetrates the cloud. Oh, man. So, you know, when you're on you're shooting an ILS or an approach at night, uh, you pull that up, it kind of gives you that little, yeah. little, little bit of situation. Yeah. Yeah. So with this category That's of equipment, cool. how, how, low, how low can you go um, before? An ILS about 200 feet ATL. Uh, but this also is the, the GPS, and this is WAS certified, which means that you can also fly RNAV approaches to almost ILS minimums. The RNAV is a GPS approach, mm -hmm. but with this system, once you load the, R the, the RNAV approach, which is uh, GPS approach, you get the same indication on the on the altitude strip. You're going to glide slope. You know, follow the glide slope. Oh yes, that's my side. And so you can actually when you get out, it's yeah. it's, it allows us to fly the smaller airports that don't have the money okay. for ILS yeah. systems in, right, which you can fly to ILS minimums. Uh, how, how far out does it give you the terrain? I mean, ahead of you. Because right now I'm looking. Well, what, uh, let me get back to the. I'll get back to the map page. Boom. Out here. And you know, it's you're not seeing. You don't get too. You know, as you get the altitude, you can see farther off. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's it's really line of sight. You know, it's done based on the temperature of the ocean. And you mountain. get terrain warnings and everything. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You'll see mountains. You'll see towers. You know, if, if we were out on the runway and pointed that way, you see you would actually see the towers out this end of the runway. So it's. Um, so, so these are all the obstructions that yep. they would normally put on the aviation map, yep. and I guess they have some kind of indication on oh, yeah, here. You actually, you actually see them sticking up. Okay. okay. And, uh, you know, we've got. You can declutter. You know, the you know take right. some of the stuff away if it's too much, or uh, right. go right back to. So you have the navigational charts inside here loaded. You know. Oh, yeah. 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 All your charts are already loaded. Uh, so when you get the updates, the updates automatically download. Yep, yep. You just uh, you take you know, these little uh, SD cards, oh, you just right. update those, and mm -hmm. put them back in, and it updates the system. This this is just like the big boys, yeah, right? Every twenty eight, yeah, you know, just like the, the big. Not boys. even some of the big jet airplanes like that we have. I mean, the pilots are still oh, yeah. having the old Jefferson charts that they have to update periodically. You know. Mm -hmm. I, I used to spend most of my flying time doing my charts while yeah. I was on autopilot. Yeah, I get the, right, I, right. I, 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 my buddy used to give me the old, yeah. old jet charts. Uh -huh. used to fly. And then they update so often, you have to you're throwing out more than you you keep. That's you know. Right. See, we've got uh, you can turn the wind on, and so you get wind vectors. Oh, where they go? Option. Oh, look at that. Right now, we're not, obviously not getting any, but you would actually, as you're flying along, it would tell you that you have winds at 320 at 12. Mm -hmm. Is there a recommended mm -hmm. heading? Oh yeah, it'll, it'll, you know, and also on uh, on the um, on this uh, page. Let me get to it. And find it again. That's why the airplane costs so much money. Uh, see, you can yeah. actually get your uh, wind information on this. Let me find it here. More weather. You can get your winds. And you can actually check to see what your winds are at different altitudes. And as you're flying along, you find out, oh, we have a, we have a shear at 6,000 feet. If I get up to 9,000, it gives me a tell. So you, and you, all that information is right here. Real time, real time. Yeah. You know, before we'd spend you know two hours doing flight plans. Right. And planning right. all that stuff. 
now, you know, now it's all, it's in the cup. Now, I'm, I'm sure this is like an adult stream, the same thing as an adult stream, or... Well, this is... Though, or is this kind of unique to your airplane? Uh, it's, it's called the Garmin Perspective. It's built specifically for this aircraft. So all the engine data, uh, all the... Uh, you know, all this engine data that's being displayed here specific to this aircraft. Okay. Um, it's the Garmin perspective. <laughs> what, uh, what they've done is the reason they put this into this airplane is because Cirrus is building a personal jet. The right, I've been reading about it, yep. This is the flight deck that's in the jet. Okay. So this is why you start your training. Yeah, you, wow. you start, right. once you learn this system, the transition to that jet is going to be nothing more than some high right. altitude endorsements right. and, and managing the speed. Right, now, right. Now, let me ask you something. Haven't they looked at a joystick or a side stick compared to the, the, the yoke, the traditional yoke? Uh, How is that? Why, well, what's the response, the feedback on, on, on this type of... Oh, nothing, nothing but positive. I mean, you know, you're going to get, you know, nothing's 100% perfect. But uh, when I transitioned from uh, the Piper Arrows, the Barons, and stuff I was flying, um, that had the, the traditional yoke, you know, center yoke, uh, it took me about 20 minutes, 20 to, you know, half an hour to get used to this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because if you close this door, your arm is resting right here, and your hand naturally just leans on this thing. And realistically, once you get 500 feet AGL, you're on autopilot, you've already got your flight plan loaded, you don't really fly this plane again until you're on short pilot. Right, right, right. You know, and then you'll disconnect the autopilot. Yeah, but just to me, I mean, a person who's right-handed, this kind of thing is a little... Some, some people have said that, well, that see, the, you know, the left-handed... Uh, when, when I started flying this, I flew from the left seat initially, uh, but I'm an instructor. So I do a tremendous amount of flying from the right seat. Right. And so, you know, it's for me, it's it, it, I, either I'm, it doesn't, it's not an issue. Right. You probably get used to it you after know, a while. You fly, when you fly traditional aircraft with the yoke, you're basically flying with your left hand. Yeah. Left hand. Yeah, you're absolutely because, right. You have yeah, that's true. Power yeah. Power and yeah. you're changing radios with your right. That's true. Uh, right. You know, transitioning to the right seat is everything's backwards. Yeah, because when we just got out of the sim, I was using yeah, yeah, it's, it's yeah. really, it's really so a left handed deal. Nothing more than a, you know, because you're, and the, way yeah, you're right. I, and the way I teach people to fly airplanes is with two fingers anyway, into so your left hand. Yeah. And then everything else is done with your right hand on the radio. You need more than two fingers in that tree out there. Um, as far as cost, cost yeah. power, you know, and compared to one, you know, one seventeen, the the uh, it burns about eighteen and a half gallons an hour. So fuel alone is about one hundred thirty bucks based on the rates right now. Uh, then you take into account the cost of ownership and stuff like that. You're looking at about four hundred to four hundred million dollars an hour. So for me to go with an instructor. Well, instructors, depending on the instructor and his rating, the instructor's going to charge you anywhere from $50 to $75 an hour. Mm -hmm. That's the flight school that we use one of these. That's, that's the cost per hour for... I don't, you know, I don't know. It's probably best to job with them. I, they, what they do is they put together packages as well, mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, they'll, they'll do, you know... Uh, so many hours uh, in a 7172 and then... Well, they... they uh, Specifically, people that, that, that Jonathan's talked to or I've talked to, as far as fractional ownership of the 22, they want to do the, the, most of the training in that 20. That's our 20 over there. Mm -hmm. and that's the same flight depth. So you're practicing in a 140 knot airplane. You're getting back up to speed, knocking the rust off. Uh, and then when you step into the 22, you're again now all you're doing is managing. Oh, I've got a faster airplane now. Mm -hmm. but everything else is the same. And the landing speed on this is about uh, what? On this, uh, you want to be over the numbers at 83. And one thing about the Cirrus is you don't have plus or minus anything. If you're, if you're, it's a, all 
composite, very slick. If you're fast, you're gonna blow. If you're slow, you lose lift really quick. So it's always, uh, it's better to be fast, but you are gonna float. So it's got about 80, 83 knots as a real sweet spot. This year. It's a beautiful aircraft.